old, but the skin dated 21,000 years old. It didn't work in 1949. 1963, a living mollusk shell, carbon dated at 2,300 years old. Well, here we are 14 years later, carbon dating is still not working. Okay. Um, 1970, this article came out and they said, if a carbon date supports our theories, we put it in the main text. If it is not entirely contradicting, we put it in a footnote. If it's completely out of date, we just drop it. 1971, a freshly killed seal, carbon dated at 1,300 years old. Still not working, folks. Okay. 1975, a baby mammoth was found frozen. Part of it dated 40,000 years old, another part was 26,000 years old, and the wood next to it is 9,000 years old. Still not working in 1975. 1981, they tried it again. This guy said, no matter how useful it is, the radiocarbon method is still not capable of yielding accurate and reliable results. There are gross discrepancies, the chronology is uneven and relative, and the accepted dates are actually selected dates. This whole blessed thing is nothing but 13th century alchemy. It all depends upon which funny paper you read. Still not working. 1984, shells from living snails were carbon dated at 27,000 years old. Still not working. 1985, they took 11 human skeletons, the earliest known human remains in the Western Hemisphere, and they were carbon dated, or dated by accelerator mass spectrometer, all 11 dated 5,000 radiocarbon years or less. Here, these things are supposed to be, you know, a quarter million years old or something. It's not working in 1985. 1992, two Colorado Creek mammoths, side by side, buried frozen mammoths, were dated. One was 22,000 years old, the other is 16,000 years old. Still not working in 92. In 1996, at uh, Berkeley University, they've got the Geochronology Center. Carl Swisher used the most advanced techniques to date human fossils. This article said last spring he was reevaluating Homo erectus skulls found in Java by testing the sediment found with them. A hominid species assumed to be an ancestor of Homo sapien, erectus was thought to have vanished a quarter million years ago. Even though he used two different dating methods, Swisher kept making the same startling find. The bones were 53,000 at most and possibly no more than 27,000. Well, I would like to point out, Your Honor, that is a 96% error. So it's not working in 1996 either. Um, it's not logical to say carbon dating works. One part of a mammoth dated 29,000 years old, another part was 44,000 years old. This article said, in the last two years, an absolute date has been obtained for the Gandong beds. It has the very interesting value of 300,000 years, plus or minus 300,000 years. So it doesn't work. We have in our library the Geological Survey Professional paper, 862. Some skeptics on the web have argued that you know, I didn't understand what the paper was saying. I think I do. It shows the charts here of the different carbon dates they got from different animals and different you know, organic material found all over Alaska, the Geological Survey paper. Sample number 454, carbon dated at 17,210 years old. Sample 455 gave a carbon date of 24,000 years old. People say, see, what's the big deal? Well, look at it. This is the same sample as 454. 455 and 454 are the same creature. They're getting different ages. Sample 299 was dated at less than 20,000 years old. Sample 137X was dated at greater than 28,000. But read it carefully. That's the same sample as 299. They gave it a different number at a different laboratory, but it's the same sample. Two different numbers, same sample. Living penguins date 8,000 years old. Dinosaur, material from dinosaur bone layers were found and dated at 34,000 years old. They find organic material with dinosaurs, sometimes frozen dinosaur bones, sometimes unfossilized dinosaur bones are found. Um, two Russian scientists dated dinosaur bones at less than 30,000 years old. Hugh Miller in Columbus, Ohio had four dinosaur bone samples carbon dated. They told him they were 20,000 years old. He didn't tell them they were dinosaur bones. If he would have said, this is a dinosaur bone and I want you to carbon date it, they would have said, oh, we can't date that because it's too old. See, they start with, this is a dinosaur bone, by the way, it's been replaced by minerals. But they start with the assumption that dinosaurs lived 70 million years ago. If I took this to a laboratory and said, would you please date this, they would say, oh, well, we'd have to use something other than carbon dating because this is too old for carbon dating. They've already decided what range it fits in. That's not how science ought to work. 
you ought to be able to say, well, uh, let's just be open-minded about this. They can date the same sample ten ways and get ten different numbers. Okay? Here's the things to consider about carbon dating. If you date a sample of known age, I mean you know how old it is, like the, uh, a tree ring, carbon dating doesn't work. If you date a sample of unknown age, it's assumed to work. It's not science, that's not common sense. As elements decay, they produce helium. One of the byproducts of carbon decay or radioactive decay of any kind is it produces helium gas, which, you know, if, unless you're in the ground where it can be trapped in a cave, it's going to escape into the atmosphere. The helium in the atmosphere indicates the Earth is not billions of years old, actually less than two million years old, just based on the helium content in the atmosphere. If radioactive decay has been going on for millions of years, there should be a lot more helium. Taking all factors into account, the helium escape mechanisms and everything, it just, it, it's not more than two million years old. It's an excellent book if you want to get more in the go down deep stuff on carbon dating. You can get it through our bookstore if you want or call icr.org, they have the book there. This guy said the rocks date the fossils, but the fossils date the rocks more accurately. But I'll tell you what, folks, the cheese done fell out of his sandwich. All right? He said they use circu it's circularity is inherent in the derivation of time scales. They use circular reasoning. Uh, specimen uh, 10017 from the moon was dated six, divided into six pieces and dated many times. The ages range from 2.5 to 4.6 billion. Notice that's nearly a 500% error. It doesn't work. I talked to a J.P. Dawson in Oklahoma. He was the chief of engineering and operations for the Lunar and Earth Science Division at uh, NASA in Houston. He said they worked on the lunar samples, including the Genesis rock. He told me they found ages from 10,000 years to several billion years in the same rock. So basically, you can kind of pick what you want. There's an excellent chapter in this book uh, called Bones of Contention. The last chapter deals with what's called the dating game. It's hilarious to see how they change the dates uh, to make them fit. You know, if any new evidence comes in, we'll just change the date and make it fit the theory. All right, we'll take a little break here, come back and talk about the other dating methods, potassium argon, some of the other ones, and then go on to more of your questions. Okay, let's take a few more questions and answers. People often ask me about the age of the Earth and say, doesn't potassium argon dating prove the Earth is millions or billions of years old? Well, Potassium is one of the elements in the periodic table. It slowly decays and turns to argon, which is a gas. So the theory is that when a volcano erupts, it melts the rock and turns to lava and comes out and spreads down the hillside, and the gas would escape because it is now a liquid. And so as potassium slowly decays to argon, which is a gas, if it melts the rock, it should reset the clock to zero,